we've discussed molecular and empirical formulas, let's go over another type of empirical molecular formula problem. Often you'll be given the percentage by mass of a compound that is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, all the elements that go into it. And when you do so, the procedure to go through it just adds one little step, and it's actually a little bit easier. Anytime you're given the percentage, if there's an additional element where the percentage is not given, simply subtract from 100 to figure out that the percentage of that element that's missing. So our previous problem, nitrogen was not, wasn't given to us in grams. If it had been in percent, we would have simply subtracted the percentages we did have from 100 in order to find the percent of that compound that was nitrogen. So like any problem, I always start by highlighting what I'm given and what I'm asked to go to. So really quickly, I'm given the percent carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and I'm given the molar mass of this overall compound for caffeine. I'm being asked to go to the molecular formula of caffeine. Now, anytime you're given a percent problem and you're asked to find molecular formula, you're going to have to find the empirical formula. And these percentages all correspond to the mass of over the overall mass of caffeine. So let's change these percentages. Instead of saying percents, let's change percent to grams. So I don't have 49% carbon. I have 49.48 grams of carbon, 5.15 grams of, of hydrogen, 28 grams of nitrogen, and 16 grams of oxygen. And then this procedure works out the exact same way as it did on the previous problem, where we're going to go from grams to moles, divide by the simplest number of moles, and that will give us our ratio for our empirical formula. However, I want to give you the most amount of tools possible when it comes to AP tests, so I'm going to show you how you can do this on the calculator and have the calculator do it for you. So first things first, pull out your calculator. Pull out your calculator, and we're going to put these all these elements into a list. So let's edit our list. Oh, I only already have things in my list, so I need to I need to clear out my list. If I hit second plus, that brings up the memory. Four will clear all of my list, and then that will get rid of that. So now, if I go into list, what we're going to do is in list one, we're going to put all the masses that we're given. And let's do this in a particular order. Let's do it in the order that an empirical formula will go by. Empirical formulas are given to us with the central atom, the atom with the most with the most potential for bonds being the first element. Carbon has the most potential for bonds here. Carbon can have up to four bonds. Hydrogen can have one. Nitrogen three, and oxygen can only have two. So carbon is our first element. So the order we're going to go is here. Carbon, hydrogen, not nitrogen, oxygen. Carbon is almost always followed by hydrogen uh, in any formula. That's usually just the, the, the standard. So as I said, we're going to put the masses we're given into list one. So list one, we're going to put in the masses we have here. So carbon was 49 point four eight grams. Hydrogen was five point one five grams. Nitrogen twenty eight point eight seven grams and oxygen sixteen point four nine grams. If we put these values in the calculator under list one, it would look like this. Now, in a normal problem, we would go from grams to moles. And to do that, we need the molar masses. So let's make list two be the molar masses of each element. So carbon, 12.01, oxygen, 1.01, 14.01 for nitrogen, and oxygen is 16.
So to go from grams to moles, we need the molar masses of each element, and we're going to figure out how many moles that is. Now remember, these are grams per mole. So if I divide by these numbers, that will give me the, the moles of each element I have. So let's put that in list three. Now you could go through and do the calculations yourself, or you can work smart and have the calculator do it for you. If you go up and highlight the L3, that means I'm going to say all of L3, all of list three, is going to be what the value is in list one, divided by the value in list two. It kind of works like an Excel sheet, which we'll do more in lab. So now I have the moles of each element that I have here. So let's put that onto our paper so our grader can follow along. Now I've transposed them into my column for moles, how many moles of each element I have. Now remember that once we've done that, we're going to take the number of moles and divide by the smallest number of moles. So that will be what we're going to put in list four. We're going to divide, we're going to simplify these down to a whole number ratio. So it looks like the smallest number of moles is oxygen. We have only have one mole, 1.0 moles of oxygen. So let's make L4, all of L4, so we're going to highlight L4. And we're going to say all of L4 is what value is in L3 divided by, and we have to manually put in what oxygen was. It was 1.0306. Enter and it will return numbers that should come out to a relative whole ratio. If they don't, you have to tinker with them a little. Maybe if this 4.9 came out to 4.333, you would have to multiply by 3 in order to get a whole number ratio. So you would multiply everything else by 3. However, let's see, we've got 3.99 for a carbon, that's really close to four, so we're going to put four in for carbon's ratio. Uh, uh, hydrogen, 4.94, really close to five, we're going to call that five. Nitrogen, that's approximately two, and oxygen's obviously going to be one. So let's fill that out on our paper. So now we have a ratio here, so we can say this simplest ratio comes out to be this. We have to make this so that we can have our grader follow along before we can go and, and give an answer. So we've got to make it so that this makes sense, what we did. Here we did the mass divided by the molar mass, so let's put that in here as well. Just put it in between the two columns so that the grader knows this is how I got these numbers on that side. When it comes to the transition between how we got from L3 to L4, if you simply label it and say, hey, that's the ratio, that should be sufficient for you to then put up your answer and say, the empirical formula, therefore, based on this ratio, and make it nice and big, is C4H5N2O. But we're not done, because it didn't ask us for an empirical formula. It wants the molecular formula. So all this is well and good, but now we need to take this one step for further. And once again, we can rely on our calculator. So if we go back to our calculator, and we go back to list two, list two, remember, is where we put the molar masses. If we go in and multiply the molar masses by the ratio we have, that will give us our 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 molar mass that that element is contributing to this empirical mass. So let's do that now. This would be, oh, I have to highlight the right box, 12.01 times 4 for carbon, 5 times 1.01 is 5.05. 2 times 14 is 28.02, and oxygen just stays 16. Now if I leave this screen, and I want the calculator to tell me, hey, I want you to t sum up. I want the sum of all of list 2. If we, go, if we go into stat and then calculate, if we calculate one var stat, we're only looking at one particular stat plot. We're only looking at what's in list two. Help if I highlight the right box. Second, list two. 
it gives us a whole bunch of information. But the only thing we're interested in is the sum of that entire list. So it's 97.11. So that means that the molecular or the empirical mass is 97.11. So let's write that down on our sheet of paper so we can get the points for finding that out. So the empirical mass is 97.11 grams per mole. And we're told that the molar mass of the entire compound is 194.2 grams per mole. When you divide these two out on your calculator, it comes out to 1.9999, about 2. Therefore, we can say that our molecular formula is going to equal 2 times our empirical formula or C8H10N4O2 and that would be the molecular formula for caffeine. Make it big, circle it so our grader can give us all the points we deserve for going through that long and arduous process. If you prefer to do it by hand, by all means please do it by hand. If the calculator method made more sense to you, by all means do it by calculator. Just make sure you have the work so that you can earn the points that are in between the givens and your answer.